Hey everyone, so let's start with another lecture video of CS2505. Today we are going to take a look at array which you probably have a lot of um, experience by now because array is a very um, a common concept in Java, Python or any of the programming languages in general. And um, in C it is more or less the same but it's more like um, it doesn't have the stuff that you already had in the other languages. Like for example, you won't be seeing um, like helper functions such as like get the size of it or like um, other stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. C, like um, array in C is more um, primitive than maybe you can imagine. So let's take a look at how it looks like. So um, an array is a homogeneous list of variables. Okay, so all of the um, types are going to be same in array. So if you initialize it as an integer, all of the contents are going to be integer and not any way around it. And um, if it's like character um, array, it's always going to be character array. It's not going to have any sort of like integer inside of it. Okay, so how it works is in C, integer character are interchangeable so in that case you can always say that if it is a character array and if you want to put an integer in it it's going to work but like um you shouldn't be doing that like whatever you are stating like if it's going to be a character array it's going to be character array you shouldn't be putting integer directly but sometimes you can we will see that later on okay so yeah, each variable are each variable inside the array, which are called elements, is at a specific position in the list. The positions are indexed starting at zero. So um, the index of an array always starts with zero. The number of variables an array can hold is called a dimension. Okay. Sometimes I may call it size. So um, don't get confused. You can call it dimension or size. Dimension is probably the preferred word for it, but even if you call it size, it's totally fine. Even if you call it length, that is also fine, okay? But try to call it dimension. I might make that mistake time to time because that's what I'm used to most of the time. So yeah, the dimension of an array is fixed, um, set when the array is created. The number of values that are actually stored in an array is called its usage. You'll probably never use this word, but like um, that's the formal definition of it. Arrays in C. Logically valid indices of an array range from zero to dimension minus one. So it means that it should be infinite, but we know that memory is limited. And so you cannot have a limitless array. In C, it is around like um, this many. And afterwards, it will give you some sort of error that memory, um, not enough memory uh, or something like that. But like um, till this point, you can have a array of this size, but sometimes like your heap size is not enough and you may not have this much uh, memory for an array. But this is usually, like this is an estimation. It's not the exact number. It kind of differs from machine to machine. But if you ever did competitive programming, this is the size you will probably go with most of the time. There is no automatic runtime check whether an array index is valid or not. Okay, so if in if you tried array in Java, you saw that like array index out of bound. In C, you will probably not see any, you will probably not see any type of errors like that. You will probably just get a segmentation fault. You have to run GDB and you will notice that your array's index is probably way beyond the um, limit that you set to. So there is no direct um, runtime check for it. So it will never tell you that array index out of bound. Accessing an invalid index may or may not result in a runtime error. So um, how it works in C is like you have the power over all memory and sometimes many memories are not valid. Okay, there was no um, uh, memory allocated for that, but, but, maybe there was some sort of memory allocated for that. And when you're using an array and you're going way beyond that and you will maybe stumble upon a memory location that was actually valid and it will give you a valid number instead of giving you a weird error. And um, just because that happens doesn't mean that it is acceptable. 
So for example, you have a array 100. Okay, and now let's assume that, um, okay, before we assume it's going to be a um, chunk of memory starting from zero to 99. Okay, so let's assume that in this 100th position, maybe some sort of memory was allocated at some point of this um, program, okay? Like for example, there is a value of nine and over here it's 10 and so on. Okay, let's assume by somehow there was some sort of memory allocated here and it was not like deleted or anything like that. So in that case, if you try like 100, if you try to access this location, you will get this number, which is nine, okay? It will not always happen, but it may happen time to time. And um, that is not a good programming practice because it's going to be random every time. So you should always make sure that um, you do not go beyond the limit you have set over here, okay? And um, sometimes, like as I say, this is random. So maybe sometimes that part is not valid. In that case, your code will give you a segmentation fault. And if you try to run GDB, it will say that there was no memory allocated for that location, okay? Accessing an invalid index may or may not result in an incorrect result, which is because of the same reason. There is no way in general to determine the dimension of dimension or usage of an array. The dimension and usage must be stored in separate variables passed when they need it. Okay, so that that is where it is different from Java. Like in Java, you can actually check the size of an array, right? But in C, you do not have any normal way to check the size of that array. So whenever you declare an array, you have to make sure that you have a separate variable. For example, in this case, I will have a variable like a size and set it to 100. So that way, whenever I'm calling a, um, any sort of like function, I am going to send this as a parameter just to make sure that that function has an idea of the size of the array because it cannot call something like dot length to get the um, to you know get the um, dimension of the array okay so that is something you should always make sure that you are doing because it doesn't have anything in build for uh, for this um, specific you know uh, usage so creating an array statically. The first way to create an array um, variable involves like static allocation. That is the desired dimension is known and specified when the code is written. Uh, creating an array statically simply involves writing an appropriate declaration. So we are going to set the um, size of the array to 256 and we are going to have a constant integer which is dice sounds relevant. So this is how we declare an array, okay? It has double, which is the type of the array, which is the name of the variable or um, name of the array. And um, this is the size of it, okay? In this case, we are actually specifying exact number of the size, like this is going to be 1000 and um, maybe have another variable that holds on to it, okay? For, um, we have a character array, it is named buffer. And in this case, we are using this number. So the buffer size is 256. In this case, we have an integer array with uh, the name dice frequent, and we are um, setting it to dice sums plus one. Okay, so here is something very important. Okay, whenever you are declaring an array statically, which is this, okay, whenever you are using a static allocation, you cannot use any type of variable over here. <clears throat> and even if you use a variable that has to be a const, which means that it cannot be changed. If the variable can be changed, it is going to give you weird errors. In Linux, because of optimization, you may not face this problem, but in other um, like architectures, you may face problem because of that. So whenever you are declaring an array statically, make sure that whatever um, the size is going to be, that size has to be constant. Either you have to define it or you have to set it to const. If you do not do that, it's going to be weird. And if you want a array with variable size, that is, the, that is what we call dynamic allocation. And we will be seeing that soon.
maybe not in this lecture, but when we are going through pointers. Okay, so for now, this is a very important um, point. Okay, I will just write it down so that you remember whenever, okay, my writing is bad. Whenever you are declaring array statically, make sure it is constant okay do not forget that this is a very important point okay so as other variables you see the elements of an array are not automatically initialized so whenever you declare an array you have to make sure that you initialize them by yourself now we are going to take a look at dynamic allocation we will not get into too much into it we will get more idea about it in the um, pointers um, lecture, but for now, this is more of a introduction of how to dynamically allocate array. The second way to create an array uh, variable involves dynamic allocation. That is the desired dimension is unknown until the program is being executed. Creating an array dynamically requires calling a C library function and requesting OS to allocate desired amount of memory to the program. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Um, this is the variable name. This is a pointer symbol, and this is variable. Sorry, 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 sorry. This is the type of the variable. This is the pointer symbol, and this is the name of the variable. Okay. The function we are using to create our um, dynamic allocation is called malloc. Okay. There are there is another one which is calloc, which is which works pretty similarly. This is the dimension of the array. And this tells the OS that these are the size of the uh, elements or usages, okay? Because um, this is a uint32, it's going to be size of uint32. And another thing to uh, know is, I will explain it later on again. If it's uint32 star, it's going to be size of uint32. If it's uint32 star star, it's going to be size of un32 star. So if there is like um, n number of stars on the left, it's going to be n minus one number of stars on the right, okay? And then it's going to be the size of, of it. So how it works is, I will explain it again. This is the um, type of the array. This is the name of the array. This pointer basically means that this is a pointer. My, okay, pointer and arrays are interchangeable in most cases. Again, you don't have to understand it for now. I'm just going, I'm just showing you how it looks like. Okay, then there is malloc. Then there is the dimension of the array. And in this case, it doesn't have to be constant. It can be anything you want it to be. Okay, into size of the type of the array. Okay, so this is how it looks like. It is the equivalent of new function in, um, uh, in Java, you have used new uh, numerous times. So malloc is the equivalent of new in C. Notice that uh, we must specify the number of bytes of memory we need, not the array dimension. Okay, that is not completely true. We are actually specifying the dimension of the array over here. And this is, okay. So what this line basically means is, um, in this case, we are not specifying something like 1000, like this is our size. Instead, we are telling it that we need 1000 into size of um, the type. Okay, so how it works is uh, in malloc, we are actually specifying one block. So if it's a double, you know that it's going to need um, eight bytes. Okay. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we need eight byte for one double. Okay, so it, while we are doing malloc, we are telling the uh, OS that we need eight byte into, like for example, this is 1000, then 1000. So we are telling it how many bytes we actually need instead of just specifying the size of like dimension of the array. So this is the um, 
biggest difference between a static allocation and dynamic allocation. In dynamic allocation, you actually have to specify the number of bytes. And in static allocation, you just specify the um, dimension of it and it works. So let's look at, look at the uh, limitation. There is no way to alter the dimension of an array when it is um, declared which is only true for static allocation. In dynamic allocation, you can actually change it, and that's why it's called dynamic allocation. However, we can create a new array of a different uh, dimension and use that instead. When an array is passed to a function, its dimension and or usage must generally be passed as well. Otherwise, the function will have no way to determine where the array ends. Because as I mentioned earlier, there is no normal way to um, like know when a array ends. Like there is no size or length function for it to be used for you, right? So um, that's why whenever you are using a function, you have to make sure that you send the length of it as well, or dimension of it as well. Um, there are no automatic aggregation, aggregate operation for array in C. So, um, <clears throat> Equal does not copy the contents of one, <coughs> copy the contents of one array to another. <coughs> okay, so um, by writing something like um, you have to add it, like for example, and if you write something like a equals b, it won't do what you think it would do. Okay. So um, honestly, it will just fail, if I remember correctly. You can give it a try and see what happens. <coughs> so equal sign does not copy the contents of an array into another, okay? Double equal is not supported by arrays, at least not the way you think it would like, okay? So um, it will be explained in the pointers again, but for now, all I can tell you is if you try something like A equals equals B to C, <coughs> whether their contents are similar or not, it will not work. You actually have to run a loop for that. And um, you have to run a loop and check all the values one by one, just to make sure that um, they are the same, okay? Arrays cannot be passed by value to a function. So we have learned so far that in C, all the values are passed by value. But um, in this case, in case of array, it is actually passed by pointer or passed by reference. So whatever changes you make to the array inside the function, it is going to show up wherever it was being called from. <coughs> Sorry about that. So accessing array elements. Array elements are specified by stating the name of the array and index of the element. <coughs> so um, it is literally the same as you have done in Java, um, you just like put that inside a bracket like uh, index and it will work. So this is how we run a for loop for um, array. So you have you are already familiar with this. Give it a try by yourself just to see whether it makes sense to you or not. So initialization via list. Okay. So um, as with all variables in C, array cells are not initialized automatically when the array is created, okay? So if you write this, um, you have no idea what the values inside are going to be. You can assume that the values are going to be garbage, but if you're using Linux, which you should be using in this course, they are going to be filled with zero generally. But that's not something you should be depending on because it differs from machine to machine. So um, the default, um, the default specific, um, convention, sorry. The default convention is it's going to be filled with garbage and you have to initialize them by yourself. This is another way of initialization. We are telling the um, <clears throat> size of it and we are actually telling it what elements are going to be inside of it. It's going to be braces. And inside that, the um, elements are divided by, sorry, separated by comma, okay? This is another way to do it. And in this case, um, we are just initializing first three of them and anything afterwards are going to be initialized with zero, okay? So if you initialize only the first element, the rest of them are going to be initialized with zero. That is a nice hack. So um, 
in this case, if you do not want it to be filled with garbage, just do something like this and it will be initialized with zero, okay? So um, this is another way to do it, but this one is bad um, because here we are telling it the size is five, but we are putting six of them over here and it may cause runtime error. It may not cause runtime error. It all depends on like what memory is like uh, being accessed for, because of this. It could be a memory that was initialized at some point. In that case, your program will run just fine. It can be a memory location that you do not have access to. In that case, it will fail. It will just give you a segmentation fault, okay? <clears throat> this is another way to initialize it. In this case, we are not actually stating what the size is going to be, but because it is initialized by three, uh, four variables, its dimension is going to be four, okay? And of course, you can always initialize a uh, like loop with the sorry initialize a array with the loop. So let's see what happens if you send arrays as parameters. Passing the name of an array to a function allows the function to modify the elements. This code is given to you in the GitHub link. Um, you can download it and play around with it a little bit just to um, have fun and understand it more. So um, let's see what is happening here. In this case, we are actually using the size that was already defined. Remember, it's a constant, so it can be used here. We cannot use like something like um, int sj equal to five and then try to use it. That may cause some errors you didn't foresee. Then we are calling a function. In this case, we are just sending the array. We are not sending primes like this. We are just sending primes, the name of the value, uh, sorry, name of the variable, okay? Then let's take a look inside the um, array. So one thing to make sure, like notice here is like, we are not specifying um, the size of it, okay? It's going to be empty. You can also use the pointer symbol over here, but for now, as we are taking a look at the array, we are just going to use the array symbol, okay? So as you can see, we didn't specify any size of it. And um, we are using SJ because it was defined over here. If it wasn't defined like this, like it is a global scope, right? So that's why the whole program has access to it. But if we didn't define it like this, we would have to send something like SJ over here, okay? Then we are putting some values over here. And then after we get outside the function, we print the values and we will see that whatever changes we make to the array over here, those changes can be seen over here. And that's why it is not a call by value. It's, it is a call by reference. So um, out of bound uh, array indices. What happens when a statement uses an array index that is out of bound? There is no automatic checking of array index values at runtime. Some languages do provide for this, like Java. And now let's take a look at uh, how it looks like. So this is our um, array and we are putting something that is out of bound. Logically, A7 does not exist. Physically, A7 refers to, a, refers to the int sized chunk of memory immediately after A6. The effects of assignment statement will be stored um, sorry, the effects of assignment statement will be to store the value of 42 at that location. So um, after A6, there might be a location that may or may not be initialized and it will put it there. Clearly this is undesirable because you do not have power over it and this is more of depending on luck. What actually happens as a result depends upon uh, what is in that particular location. It could be initialized, it could be not initialized, it could be a um, memory location you have access to, it may be a memory location you do not have access to. So there are many variables that is not within your grasp. So it is better not to do array index out of bounds. Sometimes you will have error, but sometimes it will just go on and will not give you any error, but the outputs will be very, not something you expected, okay? So um, here is a warning, and when you are going through textbooks or like Stack Overflow, you will see this one particular um, hack of how to find the size of the array. 
they will tell you um sorry dimension of the array they will tell you that to find the dimension of array you just have to write like size of a divided by size of um, a index zero remember this does not always work especially if you are trying it inside a function you can give it a try yourself maybe you are going to try it in the main in that case it will work but like if you send it through some function and then try it, it will give you some weird number. Sometimes it will just straight up give you zero, and sometimes it will just give you eight, but maybe your size is 1000. So this is not something you should be depending on. Many, many students actually think that this will work. They try it in their assignment and end up not working. So this is a fair warning, do not depend on this, okay? There are fairly, um, as uh, Professor McQueen mentioned, there are, Many fairly stupid discussions of this available online, even in some C programming textbooks. Do not believe in them. This is fake news, okay? So memory access errors, consider the possibilities. The memory location is seven may. Store a variable declared in your program, store an instruction that is part of your program and not to be allocated for the use of your program. In the first case, the error shown on the previous slide would cause the value of that variable to be altered. Since there is no statement that directly assigns a value to that variable, this effect seems very mysterious when debugging. Does that make sense? Um, let's try to explain it again in a more easier language. So um, store a variable declared in your program, like um, what type of problem is going to be? So a error shown in the previous slide would cause the value of that variable to be altered, okay? So maybe you have something like this, int a7, sorry, a6, and then you have like int b. As you are declaring them side by side, maybe their memory locations will be um, put side by side. So over here is going to be five, and then the memory location of b. But if you try to change a6, it's going to change the value of b, okay? So maybe b's value was like five and you are depending on it. But um, you made that um, error of putting something in a6, like for example, 10. Then in that case, the value of b is going to be changed to 10 instead of five. So that is some type of error that may happen and you have no idea why that happened, okay? So there is the other case, like store an instruction that is part of your program. Unlikely on modern machine, but like it would have happened if you were back in the 80s. In the second case, if the altered instruction is ever executed, it will be replaced by a nonsense instruction code. This will, if you are lucky, uh, result in system killing your program for attempting and execute, sorry, attempting to execute an illegal instruction. Like it will maybe point to a location that is not within the access of that code. Maybe it will go to the system 32 or something like that and it will change it. And to protect your PC, your OS will hopefully terminate that code. And if it does not do that, well, your PC is gone. Okay, so um, this is something that may not happen anymore, but it would have happened back then when the security of programs were not as strong. In the third case, not allocated, um, not to be allocated for the use of your program. In the third case, the result depends on the operating system you are using. Some operating systems such as like Windows do not carefully uh, monitor memory accesses and so your program may corrupt a value that actually belongs to another program. On other operating systems, um, like later on or Unix one, it will detect that memory access violation has happened and it will stop the program. This is one way to actually create virus. Okay, um, that's something you can give it a try. It will not work as easily anymore in any of the um, OS because that's something very common that commonly happened. So programmers or developers have actually fixed that issue but like it used to happen back then and um, this is how many of the computer viruses were made. So let's take a look at the uh, example of some array manipulation. We have a function called fill array. We have a function called sort. In the main function, we are um, creating an array of size 10. We are calling the function is um, 
fill array. In this case, you notice that we are sending A and SG. Okay, so SZ is basically holding on to the size of it. We are just making sure that like um, the function knows what the size of the array is. Okay, then we are printing the value, uh, whatever was um, filled by this array, uh, sorry, a uh, function. And then we are going to run sort on it. And then we are going to print it again and to see whether it is sorted or not. This is what the fill array looks like. We are just going to use random numbers to fill it with um, values from zero to 1000. And this is the, what the um, sorting function looks like. We are using insertion sort here. You can try bubble sort or quick sort or whichever you want to, you prefer. This is just an example. So um, as you can see, over here, we actually send the size of it. And um, here is the list of um, like array. So because we need to let the array know what is the, sorry, function know what is the size of the array, because otherwise it will not know when to stop, okay? So this is very important in both cases. Like even here, it runs till the size, right? If it didn't know where it ends, it will keep going on and create some weird errors. Here is another um, example or um, something you can give it a try by yourself. In this problem, we are going to try out, try to remove these odd values. And then we are going to squeeze them in, okay? So basically, um, we are going to replace these places um, so that like the odd values never existed in the first place, okay? That's something we are going to do. And honestly, um, this is something you should try to do yourself to understand whether you understood how errors work and everything in C. And of course, the code is given in the GitHub, but um, try it by yourself first and then take a look at the GitHub code, okay? So I'll give you a more um, general uh, definition of the problem and you try it yourself, okay? Take an array of integer values and eliminate all the odd values from the array, leaving only the even values and keeping them in their original relative order, but leaving no gaps within the array. For example, we would transform the first um, array below into the second one. Okay, so um, we are just going to remove all the odd values and basically turn it into this. Obviously, the algorithm must report the number of the elements in the modified array, since that will likely be smaller than the number of elements uh, than the original number. For example, we started off with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? But then we are removing this, 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 this. So from eight, it's going to be four. And we have to store that value somewhere, right? So um, when you are returning the function, you have to make sure that uh, you are telling the um, program that it turned from eight to four, okay? We do not want to make use of a second array, which would have made it very easier problem because, and we wouldn't be, shouldn't be using another array because it will just like waste memory, okay? So um, here is one approach you can take, like you set a trailer um, over here move trailer to the first odd value. If there isn't one, we are done. So basically when it reaches end, it is done. If leader points to an even value, copy and value the trailer's location, advance the trailer, okay? So um, set leader to the first value after the trailer. So this is the trailer, this is the leader, and um, if leader, like if leader points to an even value, copy the value of trailer's location, which is this, um, an advanced trailer, okay? So basically we are going to put it over here. Whether leader points to an even value or not, step the leader ahead by one point, okay? Whether leader points to an odd value, just step it forward again and again, okay? Now leader points to an even value, so copy it and advance the trailer and leader. So, um, Give it a try by yourself and see if you can do it. It's not an assignment, it's just like practice problem that you can give it a try yourself. Here is the um, code 
that is already given to you and if you if you get stuck take a look at the code and see if it actually makes sense to you so yeah um that's it for this lecture video i hope it made sense to you if you need more information or more example please let me know i am not getting enough questions in the piazza so i'm confused like whether you are understanding these concepts or you're just like you know ignore it or waiting for the test i have no idea i need more feedback to make this class better so that you actually learn more okay so yeah please communicate with me please let me know if you understand or not and if i can improve it in any way okay i'll see you in the next video